गुड इवनिंग एवरी वन एंड वेलकम टू टूडे सेशन फरा अंजुम प्रवीण मनीष कृष्णा प्रमोद एंड मेनी मोर हु आर ऑल ऑनलाइन सम ऑफ यू हैव फ्रेशली स्टार्टेड आफ्टर द रिसेंट नीट पी जी रिजल्ट some of you have recently entered into the internship eyeing on uh, the upcoming uh, neat pg 2021 so to all of you most welcome whatever be the recent result of neat pg obviously in exam taken by 160000 students 10000 ranks can only go to 10000 people only it can't be it can't go to 160000 right so obviously the proportion of the news of failure is obviously higher than the proportion of the news of success that is a little challenge so that is the reason success should always humble us down failure us should make us to become resilient as such there is no failure until we start we stop trying so doc let's make the great beginning this is dr murli bharadwaj your roommate benchmate classmate in everyday preparation i won't let you to come down of your energy at all the upcoming aims and pgi may is fast approaching us hardly it is uh, feb march april 100 more days before the upcoming aims so let us chisel the saw sharpen the saw and go for the exam so doctor let us start with gynecology obstetrics which is most scoring subject so first i want you to take a quick quiz after that we will have a discussion right so today good to see rituraj pavan uh, and many more who are all online so we have 35 questions um i'm going to give you 10 seconds time to answer each question and uh, Yes I am giving you 10 seconds time to answer each question You need to quickly punch your answers today we are discussing anatomy and physiology in gynecology So totally gynecology is having 15 chapters obstetrics is having around uh, 17 chapters So once this 32 chapters we finish and now uh, we are very much ready for the game so keep punching your answers quickly another 6 minutes you are going to finish this 35 questions after that let us start the discussion right
Yes, Doc. Good evening and welcome back. Anatomy in gynecology. There are about 70 to 80 high yield facts and the point wise that you need to master before you can confidently face the examiner's questions. So let's make the great beginning. So Doc, the pelvic ureter, are you all comfortable with the size of the font? I hope, right? Pelvic ureter, typically it will be extending from its crossing over of the pelvic brim up to the opening of the bladder. That part of the ureter from the pelvic brim up to the point where it enters the bladder is called pelvic ureter. It is 30 to 15 centimeters in length and a diameter of 5 millimeters. Why is it important in gynecology? Because all gynecologists, what is the main challenge talk? There is a great risk of injuring the ureter while clamping the uterine artery while doing the hysterectomy. The ureter enters the pelvis in front of the bifurcation of the common iliac artery. You can see that uh, the common iliac artery will be dividing into external and internal iliac artery. And uh, the ureter typically will be entering at the point of uh, the bifurcation of the common iliac artery. And at this point, it is anterior to sacro iliac joint is what you need to remember. It lies anterior to the internal iliac artery and it will be medial to the obturator nerve. This is the obturator nerve. Uh, obturator nerve and this is the obturator artery. So it is medial to the obturator nerve and vessels and it forms the posterior boundary of the ovarian fossa, the ureter. So you can see the ovary typically will be lying down in a fossa like structure and uh, this is the uterus, pelvic colon, sacral promontory and uh, the ureter typically forms the boundary of this ovarian fossa is what you should remember. Now once more for your uh, three dimensional alignment which is very important doctor especially in anatomy. So you can see that there is a round ligament which is passing here and uh, this is the uterus and you can see the ovary here and the rectum and uh, this is the um, fallopian tube and this is all the broad ligament and this is the suspensory ligament here. So this is the typical structure which you are able to see. Now the ureter typically on reaching the pelvic ischial spine you all know that uh, bony prominence, pubic remi, ischial spine you remember all that right. So at the level of the ischial spine, it lies over the pelvic floor and uh, it is crossed by the uterine artery. That is, it is the uterine artery which is carrying the blood which is crossing the ureter which is passing. And this is the point of a very important uh, place where uh, there can be a injury of the ureter. That's what you need to remember. So you can see this is the bladder, this is the uterus. And this is the ovary and you can see that the uh, ureter is mingling and in a very close relationship with the uterine artery lateral to the along the lateral surface of the uterus is what you need to remember. So doc the ureter basically passes through a tunnel, facial tunnel and uh, it is very close to the 
supravaginal part of the cervix. Cervix has one ectocervix, endocervix. Endocervix means that is the one which is above the level of the vagina. Ectocervix means that part of the cervix which is part, which is inside the vagina. So that supravaginal part of the cervix, it lies very close to it in the ureteric tunnel and on 1.5 centimeters lateral to it. And this relation is very important because whenever carcinoma cervix is there, there is a compression on the ureter and uremia is the most common cause of the death in case of obstructive uropathy leading to uremia is the most common cause of death in case of carcinoma of cervix. The ureter enters the wall of the bladder obliquely and it opens into the base of the trigonal. So typically the ureter is having constriction, constriction. So where it is crossing the pelvic brim, there is one constriction. Where uterine artery is crossing it, there is a constriction. And where it is entered into the bladder, there is a constriction. Three constrictions of the ureter is what you should remember. Now the next favorite MCQ that the examiner is trying to check with you. Can the online students, Paman Kumar, Nipun, Galhotra, Manish and everybody, can you please punch whether the uh, print and letters are clear for you or not? Yeah. Now, if you look at the blood supply of ureter, who supplies it? It is the anterior division of the internal iliac artery, which provide all the visceral branches. That is the one which is supplying ureter. So. Internal iliac arteries, anterior division gives rise to uterine artery, vaginal artery, vesicular artery, middle rectal artery, superior gluteal artery. They are the ones which are basically supplying the ureter, the blood supply of ureter, favorite question of the examiner. Then what are the lymphatics of the ureter? Lower part of the uterine dra ureter drains into external and internal iliac group of lymph nodes. Upper part of the ureter typically drains into lumbar group of lymph nodes. So ureter is coming all the way from kidney, kidney and lumbar area, you remember right? So upper part of the ureter is into the lumbar group of lymph nodes is what I want to underscore to all of you. So what is the nerve supply of the ureter? Hypogastric plexus, pelvic plexus, parasympathetic plexus coming from the sacral plexus. Sympathetic comes from the hypogastric and pelvic plexus. Parasympathetic comes from the sacral plexus. That is the story of ureter. Each of them are a single liner MCQ. Whether you are going for FMG, AIMS, PGA, need PG or any exam doctor. Right? Now, pelvic floor is the next favorite area of the examiner. Just you need to remember, 5 to 6, what are the common points asked about each of these uh, areas. Pelvic floor is also known as pelvic diaphragm. So what is pelvic floor? So you all know that there is a pelvis, pubic symphysis um, and uh, iliac uh, uh, crest. So between the anatomical perineum and the pelvic cavity. Pelvic cavity, inside the pelvic cavity you have all the structures, bladder, vadera, vadera. So that and the anatomical perineum, they both are separated by the pelvic floor. So what does pelvic floor contain? Pelvic floor, otherwise called pelvic diaphragm, it contains two levator anae muscles. So what does levator anae contain? Pubococcygeus iliococcygeus and the coccygeus. Three muscles constitute levator anae. So let's have a little uh, physical imagination. See doctor, this is pubococcygeus. This is iliococcygeus, iliococcygeus. So pubococcygeus, iliococcygeus that forms the Levator and I is what you need to remember. 
So here you have the urethra's opening. Here there is a vaginal opening, vaginal canal. Here there is an opening for the rectum, and this is the sacrum, and uh, this is the iliacus muscle, and these are the iliac crest. You can see this is the iliac crest, and this is the pubic crest. So now we are talking. We are look from the above. We are looking into the pelvis. You are able to get it, doc. So that is the typical. You need to have a physical imagination. Where is iliac oxygen? Where is pubic oxygen? What is meant by levator anae? So levator anae has three components: pubic oxygen, iliac oxygen, and the coxygen is what you need to remember. Now the levator anae muscle it arises from the back of the pubic rami. It arises from a condensed fascia, which is covering the obturator internus, and it, and uh, from the inner surface of ischial spine. So from the ischial spines, inner surface of the ischial spines, and uh, the obturator internus, pubic rami. The origin of levator anae. So you, once more, you can see that here you have the anus. I'll try to change the color of the pen. Yes. So here you are having anus, and here all this. Uh, let us take yeah. So this is all we are talking duck. So this is the typical levator anae muscle. Which forms the pelvic diaphragm is what you need to remember. Once more, you can see this is the obturator internus, the fascia covering it, is giving origin to the levator anae muscle. So this is all the levator anae muscle. You can also see it is the pelvic bone from which the origin is happening, and uh, this is the coccygeus muscle, which is the component of the levator anae. So where is it enter? Where is it inserting? So the fibers of the pubo coccygeus they arch backwards and medially. So there are some anterior fibers which are across the sides of the vagina. They form pubo vaginalis muscle. There are intermediate fibers which are passing across the sides of rectum. And they typically form the puborectalis, and this puborectalis merges with the internal and external anal sphincters, and it forms what is called anorectal ring. And the most posterior fibers of the levator anae they are attached to the coccyx, and they are also attached to a fibrous band called anococcygeal ligament. So, doctor, what is coccygeus? Coccygeus is a triangular. It arises from the apex of the ischial spine and sacrospinous ligament and attaches to the sacrum and coccyx. Sacrum and coccyx. So, this is how the rectum becomes the anal canal. Puborectalis is that sling of the muscle which is encircling. And from where is the puborectalis coming from? Puborectalis is originating from the intermediate fibers. Of the levator anae muscle, typically is forming the puborectalis. Is what you should remember. So, what is the function of puborectalis? To maintain this anorectal angle, so that continence is maintained when all the stool is collected, it will simply won't drop down. And if you are squatting to pass the stool, right? That time it relaxes the puborectalis. Straightens the rectum into anus, and that let the feces to fall down. So that is the whole purpose of squatting, relaxing, puborectalis, and enabling the defecation is what you should appreciate. So this is how the puborectalis is encircling and maintaining the anorectal angle at the continence is what you need to remember. So. This is the pelvic floor in sagittal plane. Whenever it is contracted, the elevated pelvic floor with the anal mucosa, which become hidden, 
the moment the puborectalis relaxes there is a descent of the pelvic floor there is a descent of the pelvic floor and the anal mucosa will move downward is what you need to remember okay doc now let us talk about the pelvic floor how does it look like the pelvic floor you all know that the pelvic floor is uh, i mean the patient is lying on the bed and from the anal end you are looking at it so this is the structure that you need to remember this is the dorsal vein of penis this is the place where you have the puborectalis muscle right yes this is the puborectalis muscle here you have the pubococcygeus iliococcygeus anococcygeal body and this is the coccygeus muscle right you got the idea then uh, this is the perineal body uh, so this is how it looks when you look from the below of the patient bottom of the patient right now let's talk about perineum five to six points about perineum so what is meant by perineum perineum is the area where you have the external genital and anus anatomically perineum is bounded above by the inner sur interior surface of inferior surface of pelvic floor pelvic floor upar rehta perineum niche rehta aur pelvic cavity upar rehta huh? and below by the skin between buttocks and thighs laterally if you look at the perineum it is the ischio pubic rami ischial tuberosity sacro tuberous ligaments and posteriorly by the coccyx and what is the shape of the perineum doctor perineum is rhomboid in shape and it is being divided into anterior and posterior triangles and uh, urogenital triangle is a one where you are uh, bladder urethra and all anteriorly anal triangle is the one which is located posteriorly so you should once more need to have a orientation three dimensional orientation this is the perineal membrane doctor we are talking about this perineal membrane in that you are having a urethral opening and you are having a vaginal opening this is the inferior pubic ligament now this is the perineal body this is the anal aperture external anal sphincter around it so this is how you need to know how the perineum looks like so anteriorly the vagina urethra everything in the urogenital tract it's a rhomboid shape whereas posteriorly it is anal triangle is what you should basically remember so doctor this is the anterior boundary this is the tip of the coccyx this is the lateral boundary so ischio pubic rami and sacro tuberous ligament and uh, in the anterior border there is a mons pubis lateral border it is the medial surface of the thigh inferior border there is a intergluteal cleft between the two buttocks so here you can see the bulbocavernosus transverse perineal muscles these are the transverse perineal muscles perineal body and ischio cavernosus so what is urogenital triangle anterior triangle typically it is between the two ischio pubic rami so this is the pubis and these are the uh, ischium so ischio pubic rami and there are three membranes between which there are two spaces enclosed in this urogenital triangle in this anterior triangle in this anterior triangle urogenital triangle there are three membranes three membranes three membranes which are enclosing two spaces so you should remember that what are the two spaces one is superficial 
perineal pouch more towards the exterior and one deep perineal pouch where are we talking about in the anterior triangle that is in the urogenital triangle so now you can see this is the anterior triangle urogenital triangle in this we are talking about the superficial perineal pouch and the deep perineal pouch is what you should remember now let us talk about the superficial perineal pouch between what are the two layers between which you call it as superficial perineal pouch superficial perineal pouch what you can see here the superficial perineal pouch is between the deep membranous layer of the superficial fascia see there is a this is called as membranous layer of the superficial fascia here and here right i'll try to change the color to let's say blue color yeah for you to uh, look at the things much better so this is what doctor the membranous layer of the superficial fascia and then you are having a perineal membrane perineal membrane so this is called this part this part is called perineal membrane between these two you are having the superficial perineal pouch tomorrow in surgery whenever there is a extravasation of urine whenever the urethral rupture is there you need to have a anatomical clarity on this structure structure that's the reason i am emphasizing so much so what are the boundaries of this superficial perineal pouch inferiorly it is having the membranous layer of the superficial fascia superiorly perineal membrane laterally the ischio pubic remain between that there is an enclosed space which is called superficial perineal pouch then where is the deep perineal pouch so you should remember that the deep perineal pouch it is between the perineal membrane so superficial layer of the membranous um uh, the membranous layer of the superficial fascia and perineal membrane you have the superficial perineal pouch then between this perineal membrane and the levator ani muscle between the two inferior aspect of levator ani muscle between the two you have the deep perineal pouch and why you need to remember because it contains the membranous part of urethra passing through the perineal membrane it also has sphincter urethrae and the deep transverse perineal muscles they are all passing through this uh, deep perineal pouch is what you need to remember so uh as i told you the urogenital triangle the anterior triangle it has three membranes two spaces now you got some amount of anatomical orientation now tell me doctor what are all the membranes there is a super superior fascia of urogenital diaphragm inferior fascia of urogenital diaphragm and this is also called perineal membrane is the other name for inferior fascia of urogenital diaphragm then sabse niche kya hai the lower most is the membranous layer of the superficial fascia so between the membranous layer of the superficial fascia and the inferior fascia inferior fascia of the urogenital diaphragm you have the superficial perineal pouch between the inferior fascia of the urogenital diaphragm and the superior fascia of the urogenital diaphragm you are having the deep perineal pouch and what are the other name given for this inferior fascia of the urogenital diaphragm it is also called perineal membrane that is what you have to emphatically understand barabar now doctor between the upper and middle layers that means what are the 
upper and middle layers sorry i went down uh yeah so between the upper and middle layers what do you have upper and middle layer. what is upper layer upper most layer is the superficial fascia of your genital diaphragm superior fascia and uh, the second layer is inferior fascia of your genital diaphragm what do you have deep perineal pouch and what does deep perineal pouch contain deep transverse perineae and sphincter urethrae and between the middle and lower membranes what do you have superficial perineal pouch and inside the superficial perineal pouch what do you have superficial transverse perineae bulbo cavernosus covering the bulb of the of the vestibule ischio cavernosus covering the crura of clitoris and the bartholin's gland these are the contents of the superficial perineal pouch did everybody understand the concept or not aur ek bar bolne ka zarurat hai kya i hope we don't need to repeat see doctor there's a superior fascia inferior fascia there are the two layers there are the two layers of the urogenital diaphragm urogenital diaphragm this space is called deep perineal pouch then between this inferior layer of the fascia of the urogenital diaphragm which is also called perineal membrane and the superficial um, membranous layer of the superficial fascia you are having superficial perineal pouch did everybody understand doctor are you clear are you able to catch where is superficial fascia where is the deep where is the superficial perineal pouch deep perineal pouch and what are the contents of each of these pouches this is the favorite question of the examiner please punch whether you are able to be very sure tomorrow any mcq you should be ready to answer okay doctor very good manish is saying yes sir we understood now what is perineal body typically perineal body is a fibromuscular body which is there at the junction between these two triangles the anterior urogenital triangle and posterior anal triangle and uh, this perineal body is pyramidal shaped egyptian pyramid it has all the three layers of muscles what are they levator anae deep transverse perineae superficial muscles except ischio cavernosus and the fibers of the external anal sphincter they combine to form this pyramidal shaped structure which is called perineal body which is there between the junction of anterior urogenital triangle and posterior anal triangle that is what you should understand so now doctor broad ligament examiner's favorite uh topic five to six points you should know fat of fat right so what is broad ligament broad ligament is a double fold of peritoneum so you have the uterus extending from the side of the uterus up to the lateral pelvic wall you have this broad ligament but broad ligament is not a support of uterus it is not a support of uterus now if you look at the broad ligament doctor it has three components infundibulo pelvic ligament meso ovarium and meso salpix you imagine there is a uterus surrounding the uterus there are fallopian tubes leaving there is a ovary nearby right so there is a meso ovarium there is a meso salpix easy to understand a bitch may infundibulo pelvic ligament kya hai broad ligament ka this fallopian tubes are coming out no doctor they have a infundibulum so from the infundibulum of the fallopian tube to the lateral pelvic wall there is a layer which is extending which is called infundibulo pelvic ligament which is the component of this broad ligament 
What is its significance? It contains ovarian muscles. Then this meso ovarium, it attaches the ovary to the posterior surface of the broad ligament. So you have the uterus and this broad ligament is like a big fan. All fibers come and try to attach to this broad ligament. So this ovary, ovary attaches to the posterior surface of the broad ligament with a meso ovarium. Then meso salpinx, it is between the fallopian tube and the ovary. Between fallopian tube and the ovary, you have a fan of sheet, which is mesosalpinx, and it contains the utero ovarian vessels. So that is what you should understand. Now, a few points about the various pelvic cellular tissues. In the pelvis, there is a lot of tissue, right? And it all gets condensed at many places and forms few ligaments. What are they? There is a uterosacral ligament that is extending from S2, S3, S4 to the posterior and also lateral part. Imagine a structure of uterus, uterus, body, then you have a cervix. It has a supravaginal, infravaginal uh, and vaginal part, ecto and endocervix. Endo is supravaginal. So from the lateral part of the endocervix, and the posterior aspect of the endocervix, there is a condensation which is called uterosacral ligament, which is extending towards the sacrum. Then McEnroch ligaments, what are they? They are those transverse cervical ligaments. So typically cervix is there. So you have the uterus and merging down into cervix. From the cervix, laterally they are fanning out. And typically they are inserted to the supravaginal endocervical part and they are laterally going and attaching to the pelvic wall. Then pubocervical, it is from the anterior aspect of the cervix to the back of the pubic bone. Pubic bone, that is basically called pubocervical. So what is the importance of these three ligaments, uterosacral, mechanrot, pubocervical, they are the support of the various pelvic organs. They form a protective sheath for both the ureter and also for the blood vessels. Then what is a round ligament? Round ligament are paired ligaments. They are about 10 to 12 centimeters in length. Uh, Manish is asking, Sir, you teach a little more faster. Uh, I think the video is frozen, right, doctor? Is the uh, video frozen? One minute, I restart the broadcast. Stay online. Yeah, good. We are once more back to the game, doctor. Yes. Uh, Manish Krishna is giving a good feedback. Sir, you please teach a little more faster. Sure, definitely. So, the round ligaments are the tight ligaments, 10 to 12 centimeters. And they are attached to the cornu of the uterus. And they terminate on the labium majus. Right? Labium majus. Uh, is it not clear? Just uh, hit on the refresh button, doctor. Yeah. So, cornu of uterus to the anterior third of the labium majus. You have this round ligaments which developed from the gubernaculum is what you need to remember. So this is the quick story of the uh, 
essential anatomy of uh, that is required in the gynecology our first chapter right now shall we take uh, a quick uh, quiz doctor i mean uh, shall we answer the quiz that you all have attempted definitely so doctor just now all of you at the start of the session have attended the quiz you punched your answers so now i will take you through run through of around 35 favorite mcqs of the examiner from the recent aims pgi and uh, neat pg exam on the topic of anatomy of uh, gynecology so doctor i'll try to run very fast uh, through these questions the main reason is uh, already you have uh, listened the concepts and uh, um let us try to uh have a um quick quick reconciliation of the points that we have reviewed the main source of physiological secretion of the vagina typically it all comes from the cervix is what you should remember nebothian follicles you also keep continuing to punch your answers doctor very important nebothian follicles typically they are seen in the erosion of the cervix where do you see the pexels pexels are seen in the fallopian tubes in the last class we reviewed uh, part 1 of the anatomy now this is a part 2 right fallopian tubes with regard to the labia majora it is homologous to the scrotum in males it's supplied by internal and external pudendal arteries and it drains into the superficial inguinal lymph nodes is what you need to remember it is not the broad ligament which ligament terminates in the anterior end of the labia majora doctor round ligament not broad ligament about the round ligament what is a true statement abhi abhi hum padhai kiye na it is 12 cm in length it is homologous to the gubernaculum testis it lies anterior to the obturator artery is what you need to remember but otherwise it is a facial condensation that's what you should remember the glands of litta are homologous to the glands of the labia what are the most common site of the ureteric injury during hysterectomy doctor where it is crossing the uterine artery is what you should be your uh, emphatic answer hey guys don't be angry with me i'll be running really fast see the concept is like this i give you a quiz i will give you a quiz you answer the quiz in 6 to 7 minutes 30 questions ka then i will quickly review the theory quick theory revision on that particular topic after that we will have a quick revision of all the questions that you answered at the quiz that way it remains very solid in your mind and it's a very effective way of doing the revision okay now all these pelvic structures support the vagina except keep punching the answers doctor Manish is saying, "Aap bhi dodo, ham bhi dodenge, milke dodenge." Ha, kyu nae? So yesterday, neat PG results came. So there are wonderful some students profusely thanked, it, saying that, "Oh my God, thanks sir for holding the hand and uh, making us to cross the uh, river." Some students utterly disheartened, inconsolably cried, but. जो जीता वही सिकंदर वंस मोर क्विकली यू नीड टू रिकनसाइल यूर सेल्फ रीग्रुप यूर सेल्फ कीप ए क्विक टारगेट एंड दर हंड्रेड डेज वी हैव एम्स एंड पी जी एक्स एंड कीप इट एज ए क्विक टारगेट एंड देन स्टार्ट द कंसॉलिडेशन एंड रिविजन सो दैट इज द ओनली पॉजिटिव वे डॉक्टर आई फील दैट we all should work together every day and uh, you have all the video lectures on the onlinembbs.com 
full scale grantes and all these discussions get archived you have 2 lakh powerpoint slides like this whatever you need it is all there super adequately on the online mbbs.com video library manish krishna say uh, i also cried and came back stronger today excellent doctor i still remember uh, once when i wrote entrance i almost got about a uh, very big number same time my very my best friend got the uh, second rank and uh, i virtually held him and cried today is a top uh, nephrologist uh, so they're all memorable days you know our neck become very hard oh my god i didn't make it kind of a feeling right what to do a little bit of denial a bit of anger but quickly we need to reassemble because another 100 days we have a uh aims pga after that within another 120 days we have the need pg once more so that is the reason uh, we need to look at the life in a very positive way right now what are the pelvic structure supports of the vagina so you should remember perineal body pelvic diaphragm levetrana they are all considered to be the supports of vagina with reference to the vagina it is supplied by uterine artery it is lined by stratified squamous epithelium and the posterior wall is covered by the peritoneum they are all the two statements where does the bartholin duct open the bartholin duct opens into a groove between the labia majora sorry minora and the hymen between the two the bartholin duct opens what is the length of fallopian tube got to be 100% sure 10 to 12 cm it is the same length of even round ligament also with regards to the vagina what is the true statement typically it makes an angle of 45 degrees with the horizontal Three days back, we made a discussion, right, of handwritten notes. Then it is lined by stratified squamous epithelium. The vaginal axis lies parallel to that of the uterus, and it is at right angles to the plane of inlet axis. That is uh, a wrong statement. It does not lie parallel to uterus. There is a um, antiversion. anti flexion all of you know very well now with regard to the ligation of the interiliac artery it is done basically for the homeostasis you do only anterior division not posterior division collateral circulation become developed between middle sacral and lateral sacral arteries and uh, the artery should be ligated and not transected you don't cut it you don't do ribbon cutting of the chief minister you will do the ligation for the hormonal study where do you take the sample it is the lateral wall of the vagina from where you take the sample these are all related to the lateral vaginal fornix so what are they ureter mckenrod uterine artery they are all related to the lateral vaginal fornix A woman presents with a fluctuant, non-tender swelling at the introitus. So, how do you want to manage a Bartholin cyst? Marsupialization is the one which is being done. Vaginal uh, uh, we'll take the next question. Gonococcal vaginitis. Where do you see that? in the newborn females theoretical because the vaginal epithelium is uh, if there is no estrogen available it is not that resistant is what you need to remember so what is the ph of vagina in adults 4.5 to 5.5 it is acidic ph 
Bartholin cyst is caused by the gonococcus. Ovary is attached to the posterior layer of the broad ligament by mesoovarium. Just now we discussed, no doctor? Cervix to corpus ratio before puberty is how much doc? It is 2 is to 1. Last week we discussed in the part 1. Protective bacterium kya hota hai? Normal vagina mein. Lactobacillus is considered to be protective. What is the narrowest part of the fallopian tube? It is the interstitial portion, which is the narrowest part. The fallopian tube, it is surrounded by the peritoneum on all the sides, except along the line of attachment of mesosalpinx. Which ligament carries the ovarian artery in the lateral wall? It is the suspensory ligament of the ovary, just before we discussed that. That is the one which carries the ovarian artery. Lymphatics of vulva. Typically they traverse the labia from medial towards lateral side is what you should understand. Uterine artery is a branch of internal iliac artery. You should know anterior division, posterior division, what are the branches. Then what is the narrow supply of the pelvis? The sensory component of the pudendal nerve supplies the vulva, clitoris, perineum and lower vagina. The motor component of the pudendal nerve supplies all the muscles of the pelvic floor. The anterior half of the vulva is supplied by the ilio, inguinal and genitofemoral nerves. That is all the true statement. You train to cervix ratio up to 10 years of age is typically 1 is to 2. So, examiner is quite obsessed about this uh, uterine cervix ratio doctor very regularly. Vaginal epithelium, how is it derived doctor? It is from the endoderm of the urogenital sinus from which the vaginal epithelium is derived. Now the triangular area which is being bound by clitoris, the fauchet and the labia minora, what is that called as? It is called the vestibule. What is the epithelial lining of cervical canal duct? It is the high columnar epithelium is what you should remember. Uh, Devrat Soni is saying, Sir, no video, only voice. Oh my God. Please refresh. Your internet speed should be good enough. Uh, is it a problem? Manish, Manish is our uh, camera director. Manish, is it uh, loud and clear? I am able to see it loud and clear here. Anatomical sphincter of the fallopian tube. It is typically intramural is what you need to remember. Uh, okay, Serenya, thank you. No problem, sir. It is clear. Okay. Now, forchet. What is forchet? Forchet is where both labia minora, they meet posteriorly, not anteriorly. Posteriorly is called forchet. Is what you need to remember. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Now, doctor, with all this discussion, you are the champions in the topic of Anatomy in gynecology. Now let us talk physiology in gynecology. Right, Doc? Very good. So, before we start the next chapter, Physiology in Gynecology, I want to give you a quiz. And following the quiz, there is a discussion. So, doctor, what I will do is, I will end this broadcast and within two minutes, I start a new broadcast. The idea is, the first broadcast, we will, uh, we don't delete it from the YouTube, so that it is like an advertisement for us. Hey guys, a unemployed MD general medicine called Murli Bharadwaj is there to study with you every day. Please join 
and subscribe into online mbbs.com video library right so the second part after the discussion is over we will be deleting it um, and uh, both the parts we will be uploading into the online mbbs.com video library for you to have a revision okay so just apologize me two minutes i will uh, close this broadcast and restart the broadcast uh, for this purpose right so please stay online just refresh after two minutes we are once more online